Hello uh, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, from today's video, we are going to talk about uh, the thermal analysis of a PCB board that contains a central processing unit and uh, for memory chips. So this is the basic geometry. You have the PCB board and the chips uh, on top. Uh, the, the chips are made of silicon uh, and the PCB board is made of uh, FOR epoxy laminate. So we are going to do the analysis on ANSYS. So the ANSYS uh, material database has uh, all the uh, materials. So we don't have to uh, refer to any uh, literature to obtain the material properties. So the problem uh, says that uh, the memory chips dissipate a power of 0 0.125 watts. Uh, and the central processing unit dissipates a power uh, that varies according to the uh, operating uh, frequency of the CPU, that means the clock speed. So it says that the uh, power varies according to this, uh, uh, what you call the equation. So, so what we can do is, uh, since the, the, the usual way of uh, applying the boundary conditions of power generation in the ch chips uh, is best when we use internal heat generation. What we can do is we can use these power values and divide them by the uh, volume uh, of these chips. We can uh, obtain from the dimensions and then apply them as internal heat generation uh, within the ANSYS setup. So we are going to do that. And also it says that the PCB is raised about the enclosures flow. So it means all the uh, surfaces are exposed to ambient air within an enclosure. So we can assume that the enclosure is properly uh, ventilated. So we can uh, uh, analyze this. So the maximum uh, CPU speed is 100. So we can use this value to obtain the power value of the CPU and then divide by the volume so that we can obtain the uh, internal generation. So what I have done initially is I have drawn the geometry uh, uh, in uh, ANSYS. Let me show you how this geometry was made. So we have to take some uh, actions within the design modeler so that we can uh, split the phases accordingly. So let me show you again from here. So if we consider the convection uh, that occurs from the PCB board, since we have uh, made the components uh, separately, we have to ensure that these portions, sorry, these red portions uh, on the PCB uh, board does not uh, involve in con convection because that's the con uh, contact surface. Uh, between the memory chips and the PCB board. But in ANSYS, if you don't split the surface, when you click this green color surface for convection, it will include these uh, contact surfaces as well. So what we need to do is we have to split the surface. Now, if I click on the green surface, you can see that uh, these contact surface has been split. But if I uh, suppress this split feature, and then click on this. Yeah, you can see uh, these surfaces are included. So you have to make sure that they are split uh, before the simulation so that you can properly uh, apply convective bound conditions. Uh, so I'll let teach you how to do the split feature so you can go to the uh, create uh, tools option and then you have the place split option. Then what you can do is, since we have the edges that we need to split, we can uh, click the target phase as the main phase. And the tool geometry, you can click on, click two points and create a line. Yeah, you can see. So uh, you have to press control. Uh, so you can select uh, multiple lines. Like this, you can uh, create the enclosed uh, 
edge profile uh, you can similarly do this to all the other chips and then you can uh, uh, generate it so i'm not going to do that since i have uh, already done it so once you generate that you will be able to uh, split these surfaces off from the model so i'm going to close the design model now uh if it has been updated so i'm not going to update it because all right don't mind about this to just uh, give your concern on the pcp only uh state steady state thermal analysis so i hope you guys already know what the difference between the steady state and the transient analysis uh, the transient phase of a simulation is where where the properties change with time uh, if we assume that the properties don't change with time then that the if, if you apply a heat to some part some component or any any machine part then you you know that uh, the temperature is going to assume a steady state so that initial phase is called the transient phase and once you assume steady state conditions then that's called a steady state so you can use the steady state uh, thermal analysis to straight away find the steady state uh, thermal distributions and the ter thermal analysis so initially i have uh, six components so you have to choose the materials the chips are silicon and the board is for epoxy uh, contacts i have uh, not uh, modified the contacts i have used as bonded contacts that is automatically generated so for the mesh i have used body sizing here i have used uh, one millimeter uh, for the pcb board uh, and 0.5 millimeters for the chips and i've used the hex dominant uh, mesh method uh, to ensure that the uh, that we get uh, hex elements on the pcp board that would be easy and then you can mesh it uh, i'll mesh it i'll update here you can also uh, do a mesh sensitivity analysis if you need uh, to ensure that your results are converging make sure you untick the highlight button so that would be easier for the gpu to uh, mesh it so here's the mesh so in terms of the boundary conditions initial temperature i've uh, kept at 22 you can add, uh, change the value to whatever you want uh, uh, since it's a steady state analysis, it's only one step. So convection from PCB. So as we did earlier, we can uh, now we can click on all the phases of the PCB, and that will automatically uh, neglect these contact surfaces since we split it. So if you uh, if I want to show you how it's done, I'll hide this body and I'll click on this convection from PCB here. You can select that. See that uh, this space is not selected. So that's because the, we we created a split feature. Uh, so similarly, uh, convection from PCB, and we have added radiation also. Uh, so uh, the bodies are usually the EP EF4 bodies are usually has a emissivity of zero point eight, and I have used ambient conditions. Yeah, the co co uh, correlation I have used as surface to surface because we, we have enclosed this uh, unit inside the enclosure. So, and that, and then I have used uh, enclosure type open. Uh, and then radiation from chips. Similarly, you don't have to select the contact surfaces, only the outer surfaces. Uh, convection from the chips, and then heat, internal heat generation from the CPU internal generation from uh, the memory chips that we obtained by dividing the power dissipated value uh, from the uh, volume. Uh, and then I'll tell you one easy option if you do want to do a parametric analysis. 
since uh, the the internal heat generation in the CPU varies in a problem uh, uh, with the clock speed, what you can do is you can set this value as a parameter and then do several uh, design cases and then you can simulate it easily easily if you need to do a parametric analysis so make sure you uh, take this temperature maximum also as an output so that would be easier so if we solve this now it would take some time uh, We have convection uh, on all the surfaces, radiation on all the surfaces. Uh, you have to set the immediate values uh, because uh, it would not automatically come into the uh, setup. Okay, I'm back after the solution is done. So. Here's how the temperature distributions uh, look like. You can uh, select whatever you want from here. You can see that the maximum temperature is around 90 and the minimum is around 24. You can see the heat flux as well. This is where the main uh, transfer of heat occurs, like from the chips to the PCB board. And uh, so in this problem, uh, uh, it says that the maximum temperature cannot exceed uh, 90. So what I have done is, I've, I've, I've done a, another uh, analysis, a similar one. I, I've added the heat sink on top of the CPU. So that's one way you can reduce the temperatures in the, uh, like a component so the electronic uh, PCBs. So here's here's the uh, what you call. Uh, you can rename this for convenience. So here's the heat sink that I've added on top of the CPU. You can see the CPU underneath. So similarly. As we did earlier, you have to split the phases accordingly because uh, this uh, portion, the, the, the surface of the PCB board under the heat sink would not uh, conduct uh, convection. So you have to split accordingly. So I'll show you. So these areas should be properly uh, uh, what you call uh, split. So the other other connections and the mesh is similar. Uh, boundary conditions: you have ad additional convection uh, from the heat sink and an additional radiation from the heat sink. That's all. Internal heat generation would be same. So once you solve this, you can see that the maximum temperature drops to six to four. So that's the main reason why we add a heat sink. Another alternative according to the problem is that if it reaches, uh, reaches uh, 90 degrees Celsius, the CPU clock speed would drop to 10 megahertz from 100 megahertz. So uh, the, they want us to analyze the uh, whether the uh, solution is feasible. So in this case, since the uh, internal heat generation values differ from time, we have to do a transient analysis. So this is the transient analysis that I've done. So as we know, we have to set the initial temperature, but in, in the transient case, we can't use it, use the default value of 22 because we are simulating something that is, uh, that has an initial temperature of 90, which means like if the PCB board, if any part of the PCB board re reaches 90, then, then only the frequency drops. So in that case, what we can do is use the solution of the steady state analysis. So that would give us an initial temperature distribution according to this, that would be the best option for us. And then uh, you have to drag and drop a transit analysis into the solution. The setup is uh, almost the same. 
in this case, only the internal heat generation uh, value in the CPU differs because uh, the frequency is uh, reduced to 10. Uh, so if you go to initial temperature, you can see that uh, it's a non-uniform temperature that is taken from the results of the previous simulation. So for analysis settings, I have added time steps, uh, as you can see, 150, 100, 1000, and then into 7000 in step of 1000. So that's, that's to make the simulation easier since, since it would, this would take some time to cool down. And the other boundary conditions are the same. So you can solve this. Uh, this would take some time uh, since it's a transient analysis. Uh, I'll uh, come back uh, when the solution is done. Um, back after the solution is done, it took some time. So, so in this case, we are going to find the time taken for it to achieve a steady temperature from uh, 90, about 90 Celsius. That was uh, the solution of the previous steady state thermal analysis. So you can go temperature. And if you go down, you can see that the temperature is around 62.315. And it's almost has converged. Here you can see it's almost converged. So that means the solution is uh, solution has uh, achieved steady state. But if in in your case, if you don't see a value that is converged here, and uh, what you can do is in case in this case it's seven thousand. Uh, you can add time steps and remove uh, time steps in the middle to make the simulation faster. So in this case, since I've already seen that the solution has achieved a steady state, I'm not going to do it. So yeah, that's how the transient analysis is done. Again, uh, why these data was obtained here was like we are going to, <laughs> if, if the PCB boards, board reaches a temperature, uh, of 90 or more, then the CPU clock speed reduces, which means the internal heat generation reduces. So for that, we need the initial temperature for the uh, analysis. So we are going to obtain the maximum temperature uh, thing from here and do the transit analysis. So yeah, that's how it's done. So if you have any questions, do comment, check out our blog post and then subscribe. Thank you.